Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have some historical romance series to recommend to y'all. We're halfway through getting the next part to season three of Bridgerton, so I thought it would be a great idea to recommend some historical romance series that I love that y'all could possibly read while waiting for that TV show. I know a lot of my friends have been doing this recently and I've just been loving all their videos and stuff, so I just thought I would pitch in, try my own shot at this. So my first series that I would obviously have to recommend that you read is the Bridgerton series by Julia Quinn. Um, so if you're waiting on the TV show and you haven't read the books yet, you can go ahead and read the books. The books I feel like are similar somewhat to the show. They definitely have their moments of straying and the TV show has definitely like made it its own. Um, but if you're wanting something like Bridgerton, go ahead and read Bridgerton, you know? I actually have a whole entire vlog of me marathoning these books, reacting to reading these books. So I'll leave that vlog down below. There are eight books in this series, all revolve around one of the siblings in the Bridgerton family, one of the children. My favorite in the series is personally Francesca. I love Francesca. I love her story. Her story is absolutely heartbreaking and heart-wrenching in like the best way that Julia Quinn could like make it. <laughs> I feel like out of all the books in the series, that one is definitely my favorite. And whenever her season comes, like things are gonna happen, things are gonna go down, my heart's gonna be broken. So, but yeah, definitely go check out the Bridgerton series if you have not yet. Then I have the Marriage of Convenience series by Anne Gracie. I recently got into Anne Gracie because I started a different series by her, but Libby didn't have the rest of the audiobooks other than book number one, which was The Autumn Bride. That she, Libby didn't have all the rest of them, so I couldn't read the rest of them. But I went and looked at her other books and these are good too. So um, I read all four of these books. I read all four of them um, in May. This series starts out with our hero getting with our heroine because he just became the guardian to his teenage sisters and he doesn't really know what to do with them. So he hires the heroine to kind of like be their school teacher and governess and to take care of them because they kind of get into some messy situations. Um, but then they also get in a marriage of convenience for reasons. All of these books are kind of like Marriage of Convenience stories, hence the series title, Marriage of Convenience series. If you want a series like full of family vibes, like I love historical romances that yes, it has like the romance at the forefront, but then you also, I feel like need to have those side characters too, because they have to feel like build off of each other in order for it to make like a series. So I love personally the side characters, the side stories, and this series, like Anne Gracie knows how to do that. And so I love her books because of that. My favorite in this series is probably book number two, Mary in Scandal. This is about one of like the hero from book one's younger sisters. And she has to get in a marriage of convenience with somebody. Um, this has plus size representation and it's also has dyslexia representation before they knew what dyslexia was. Like she is so self-conscious over the fact that she cannot read. That whole discussion was like explored heavily in this book and I really appreciated that. So I absolutely love this one. It's definitely my favorite, book number two. Um, and then I will say book number four, heroin in that one gave me Eloise Bridgerton vibes. So if you're wanting something with Eloise Bridgerton vibes, read Mary and Scarlet, the last one. Next is a series that I have not completed. <laughs> I read, I think, three or four books in this series. This is the Maiden Lane series by Elizabeth Hoyt. There are, I think, like 11 or 12 books in this series. Um, I own quite a few. I know that the audiobooks are fantastic because I've listened to the ones that I have read. But I actually started with book number, like, six, no, seven or eight. I can't remember the exact number, but I started with Dearest Rogue. I think, which is about a heroine who is blind and I think she's the sister to a duke and he hires a bodyguard to like take care of her, bring her around the city, make sure she doesn't like run into things she shouldn't, like basically lead her around the city, help her live a fulfillful life, you know, like a normal life. And this is her falling in love with her bodyguard who is way older than her, it's an age gap romance. So I love that one. I've also read Darling Beast, which is about a hero who can't speak and a heroine who's a single mom. And I think she's an actress too. Like I love that one. And I've also read book number one. So um, I kind of started with the two that interested me the most. I probably should have started at book number one, which I didn't, but I definitely want to continue on with the series. But I love these because you can see the characters like, like filter through the other books in the series. Like, oh my goodness, who's that person? And then they, they get their own book. Like, 
and I love Elizabeth Hoyt's writing. Um, it's really hot. It's really fun. I really recommend it. And I do need to continue on with these books. Next, I have the Spindle Cove series by Tessa Dare. I don't own all of them. These are the ones that I do own. Um, and there are little novellas in here as well. I feel like this is Tessa Dare's one of like least love series, but it's one of my favorite. So this series starts out with book number one, book number one, um, A Night to Surrender which is about our heroine named Susanna. She did not have the best life in the ton. You know, the ton means like society, by the way, like high and mighty society, right? Um, kind of like the way Bridgerton is, they're all going to balls in the ton. The ton's going to balls. Anyway, um, so Susanna is not really feeling the ton. I'm pretty sure has like social anxiety, if I'm not mistaken. And when she's staying with an aunt, and like extended family, they think something's wrong with her. And so they kind of like medically torture her in a way. And she has not been the same since. And when her father figures out about this, he is so mad. He is so mad. He ends up taking her away and making this little town for her called Spindle Cove, which is a town for other women who don't feel very comfortable in society to come and seek refuge at. So that's like what the whole series is about, is about like these women coming to this very small town filled with majority of women. So a lot of women feel safe, like feel safe in this town, but there are some men in here. Okay, so Bramwell in this book, he is our hero and he ends up going to Spindle Cove because he's been tasked by the king to form a militia in this town that is full of women and like old men. <laughs> So he has to like put together like this militia full of like ragtag, ragamuffin men, <laughs> okay? Um, it's actually really funny, but like the moment that they see each other, there's an instant spark. Um, and that's all I wanna let you know about this first book because it really sets up the whole series. I love these books so much. Um, we had a read along for this last summer and it was so fun. Like I really wanna just reread them all over again because oh, I love them so much. I also forgot to mention at the beginning of this video, I do have a part one. So I have like another video full of series. That's why I didn't recommend like other Tessa Dare ones because I've already recommended them in a different video. So another Tessa Dare series that I haven't recommended yet um, is the Wanton Dairy Maid trilogy. The title is definitely unique for this series. Also, by the way, I don't own book number one, which is Goddess of the Hunt. Um, and I've only read book one and book two, so I haven't read this third one. Um, so I think this was Tessa Dare's first ever series if I'm not mistaken and she has another one also um that I haven't read any of those books yet because I want to finish these um but these definitely are different than like Spindle Cove because these were like her first works um so I kind of like take it with a grain of salt when I read these I'm like she's written like way better since then but I, st I love her writing still I love her stories I love her characters so I do still recommend this series the reason why it's called the Wanton Dairy Maid trilogy is you gotta read the first book to figure that out. I'm not gonna tell you, but the series title is definitely interesting. Um, like, and this one is a pirate book, so that one's fun. Um, but the first one, but yeah, these are all about, I believe, friends who get their mans, you know what I mean? The first book is a brother's best friend where um, he kind of like gives her seduction lessons and I think fake dates her because she wants the attention of this other guy, but then they end up falling for each other instead. I think they actually like he ruins her on accident and then they have to get married, I think. Um, and then this one is like a piratey, pirate-like romance, okay? Um, Surrender of a Siren. And I haven't read this third book yet, but I hope to soon. Um, I think I'm waiting to figure out where to get the audiobook. So um, I also recommend this series if you haven't checked them out yet and you love Tessa Dare. Another historical romance author that I love is Stacey Reed. So the series that I have to recommend today by her is Wicked and Scandal. There are four books in this series and I believe all of them are on Kindle Unlimited because um, a lot of times you don't get a lot of like historical romances with like popular authors on Kindle Unlimited, but this one is, Stacey Reed has a lot of books on Kindle Unlimited, um, but there are, are audiobooks for all four of these books, by the way. I think these are just books that build off of each other, if I'm not correct, of like people who know each, know each other in the ton. I don't think they're necessarily like friends. I think they're more like acquaintances. They know each other. Um, I don't think like the men know each other either. Anyway, long story short, they're connected somehow, loosely connected. Um, so you could read these as standalones because I know a lot of people have read book number four by itself which I think is fine. That one is when the Earl met his match and that one is definitely my favorite. Um, that one is about a heroine who um, actually ends up meeting the hero through letters. He puts an ad in the newspaper looking for a wife and all the qualifications he wants in a wife and the heroine sees this ad and is like that is ridiculous and so he she basically writes him back saying this is ridiculous you're never gonna find a woman with all those qualifications I'm just letting you know like she does not exist. She might exist in your dreams she 
doesn't exist in real life. And so these two kind of got, like, get in like a banter filled, like epistolary relationship. Um, but then she makes a mistake and she thinks she's in love with this guy who gets her pregnant. And she basically shows up on the hero's doorstep and is like, um, can you marry me and maybe save me? <laughs> Cause I'm pregnant here. Basically that one, um, the hero is speechless. So that's their representation there. Um, and then I also really liked the first book, which um, the heroine gets ruined by the hero. So, and I think he's a single dad, if I'm not mistaken, so. Next is the Bow Street Bachelor series by Kate Bateman. I'm missing another book in the series. I'm missing book number two. Um, but this is book number one, which is this Earl of Mine. Um, so each of these books um, are about men who are part of the Bow Street Bachelors, kind of like detectives, if you will. Um, so they're all like brothers, brothers slash friends. You know what I mean? My favorite one in this series is the last one, which is The Princess and the Rogue, because it's an Anastasia retelling. And I am obsessed with anything Anastasia retelling. I grew up with the movie, like I'm in love with it. Okay, so anything Anastasia retelling, I'ma read it. So I love this one, it's really good. So yeah, if you want like detective-y, like historical romances that are actually hot, like Kate Bateman knows how to write some hot books. I'm just saying. Next I have the Notorious Ladies of London series by Scarlett Scott. I own the first three books in this series, but there are six. And I've only read the first two, by the way. And I also think, these are on Audible Plus, if I'm not mistaken. Um, at least these first two are. My favorite one that I read out of the two is definitely Lady Ruthless, which is book number one. This was like one of my favorite books of last year. Um, this one definitely gave me Bridgerton vibes because the heroine is writing these anonymous pamphlets and letters titled The Sins of Lord Sin. And it's basically describing all the sinful, scandalous, horrible, debauched things that Lord Sin has done. Lord Sin is a real man. And um, so people are kind of like ostracizing him from the ton because they're reading these things and thinking that he's actually done it, like slept with husband's wives and killed people. And he's like, I haven't done any of those things. Who is this person pretending to be me and writing all this stuff? Like what the heck? And so he tracks her down and kidnaps her and basically is like, you ruined me, can't get a wife. So you're gonna marry me instead. So <laughs> I love Lady Ruthless so much. Um, Lady Wallflower, I can't remember all that much about it um, just because Lady Ruthless like held such a punch for me so and I haven't read Lady Reckless yet but this was like a steal when I found all three of these at a used bookstore I was like Scarlet Scott yeah I'm taking them I'm bringing them home with me um so the Notorious Ladies of London the series is actually spun off to a different Scarlet Scott series that I talked about in like a different historical romance series rec video like the one that's linked below um so this is like a spin-off to that and that series is that like group is kind of like put together at the end of that series but you don't need to read them like you can read these as standalones. You don't need to read that series to get to this one. I'm just letting you know. Scott Scott also, by the way, is another author that is on Kindle Unlimited. So if you want like good historicals on Kindle Unlimited, Scott Scott, one to go with. Next I have the Midnight in Scotland series by Elisa Braden. I have a book number two and book number three here. I have read books one through three. I just don't own book number one. And then book number four recently came out. So I don't own that yet. I haven't read it yet. Um, I think the audiobook just came on my Libby and I either put a hold on it or I'm going to soon. So <laughs> um, I love these books. If you want like Highlander, like Scottish men, <gasps> you need to pick up this series. It's really good. Um, The first book though, doesn't have like a Highland Scottish man. The first book um, is actually like a brave retelling, which it's like very loose brave retelling. So each book in the series is about a, a brother, except for book number one, I'll get, that in, get to that in a second. Um, so each book in the series is about um, a brother in the McPherson family. He's a McPherson. Um, he's like kind of a McPherson. I think he's like adopted into the family, if I'm not mistaken, if not a brother. Anyway, so <laughs> book number one though is about their sister. So she's like the only woman. She's been raised by all these boys, by all these brothers, by her dad. So and she has the fiery red hair. Um, and then she thinks for whatever reason, you figure out in the book that she needs to woo an English Lord. And there's a Lord that kind of like moved in next door to them in the Scottish Highlands. And she's like, can you give me like lady lessons? So he gives her lady lessons and then they fall for each other. This one is, probably my favorite. It's book number two. You have a scarred, damaged hero. He's missing an eye. He was falsely convicted of a crime and was sent to jail and like basically tortured, beaten in jail. Um, and the heroine witnesses something that could like implicate him 
Um, and so, because he was just defending himself, but still like people can throw him back in jail after that. So the heroine witnesses him do something. And so to like save her from having to like testify against him, they get married. And oh, I love this one so much. And then this one is a forced proximity. The heroine is like in danger from somebody. I think an ex-admirer is like after her or something. And so one of the brothers um, is like, okay, I'm gonna save you. And we're gonna go like be in a cabin away from the world um, until my brothers are able to track down this guy and like save you essentially. I really love this series and I definitely need to read more Lisa Braden. Leave your recommendations below for other Lisa Braden series that you love. And lastly, I have a novella series. Um, this is the Fallen series by Nicola Davidson. Each of these are short in length um, and they're also pretty short audiobooks. All of them have audiobooks. Um, they're on my Libby, you can check where they are for you. Each book in the series is about one of these guys who kind of like swore they'd never get married or fall in love and then look at them now. I think they all are a part of this like club if I'm not mistaken, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, but yeah, my favorite one I think is the last book because again, you have a redhead Scottish man <laughs> as, the, as the hero of the last one. So I really like that one. Um, but if you, these are probably the hottest out of all of the ones today. Like if you want like hot, spicy, good time, like these are the ones you should pick up. Anyways, there you have it. Those are some historical romance series that I have to recommend to y'all today. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting anything else, you can leave me a book stack emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.